Chapter 14, The Plan. Towels were distributed to the foursome, with Jack refusing to let anyone enter his living room until they were dry. Finally they were, and he escorted them into the inner part of the house. A simple chair was placed next to a crackling fireplace. Jack sat there, leaving the rest to squeeze onto the nearby couch. Well, this must bring back memories, Art said. Huh? You know, the giant has returned. It's dark and stormy, Jack continued to stare at him, obviously confused. You know, the story? Don't believe everything you hear. Well it can't all be a lie, Betty said, looking around. You're here. The beanstalk is here. I'm sure the sword is here somewhere too. Sword? The sword of gold, silver and bronze? Jack let out a mocking. Ha! Huh, and shook his head. That sword was given to me by some crazy lady out of the blue. I gave it to the goose. You know our teacher? She's a teacher? In my day she was a spin instructor. In our day, she's a teacher, and a famous author, Art replied. Oh of course. She took my story and ran with it, I guess. Your story? Chumpty asked, side-eyeing him. Listen, I brought you in here to get out of the rain, not to give you a history lesson. But the giant. For the last time kid, the giant isn't back. Trust me, I would know. So you won't help us? Jack scoffed again. You're awfully dim, you know that. Ah, no, you're thinking of me, Art said, raising his hand. There's nothing to help you with, Jack insisted, leaning over to peer out the window. Looks like the rain will be falling for a while. You can have some food and you can rest here. He pointed to the floor of his sitting room. Here only. Don't go snooping around my house. Once the rain is gone, you leave. I'll even give you some supplies for your trip back. We're not going back, Chumpty said sternly, rising from the couch. We're going up. Fine, Jack snapped. You want to go up there? Fine. Do what you want, but don't expect any help from me. Why start now? Chumpty fired back. You haven't helped us since we showed up at your door. You're in my house aren't you? Jack fired back as he stormed out of the room. He left them in stunned silence. What are you gonna do? Betty asked. You heard him. If he won't help us, we're on our own. He stepped over to the opposite end of the room and laid on the floor. As soon as the storm eases up, we'll head up the beanstalk. Everyone nodded in agreement and dispersed around the room to find a comfortable place to lay down. Tired from their adventure, they all fell right to sleep. Only Alex remained awake, watching the trio, making sure they were all snoozing soundly before slipping out of the room. Jack was lying on his bed. It was three in the afternoon but he napped at three so there was nothing odd about that. He wasn't napping today, though. He tossed and turned and struggled to get comfortable. Bah, he said, sliding out of the bed and reaching under it to pull out a box. The case contained a silk pouch, with a handful of small objects inside. He held the pouch in his hand for a moment, remembering. Bah, he said again, frustrated. He crawled back onto the bed and closed his eyes, hoping to will himself to sleep. Something nagged at him, however. A faint murmur persisted, coming from outside his window. He tried to ignore it but he could not. Finally, he hopped out of bed, intending to throw open the hatch and shout for his guests to quieten down. Instead, he paused, having heard someone say the name Jack. Naturally, he was curious to know what they were saying about him. He opened the window slowly and carefully listened. Tom, Sam, and Al were discussing their sinister plot, lingering near the beanstalk in Jack's backyard. A fourth individual lingered in the shadows nearby. My head still hurts you know, boss, Sam said, rubbing the knot next to his left ear. It had to be done, an unseen voice replied. Had to be convincing, you know. It was a great plan, boss. Really? Worked out beautiful, Tom said. What's the next move, Sam wondered. Yeah, when do we get to eat Lothar food? Al asked, smacking his lips. What do you say, boss? Sam asked. Do we get them now? He flashed his razor claws just as a flash of lightning lit up their surroundings. The storm was going to get worse before it got better. Or do we get them on the way down? Neither, the voice in the shadows replied. Another flash of lightning revealed his face. 
Alex hopped off the lowest leaf on the beanstalk and perched in the midst of his three companions. We'll meet them at the top. We'll, as you say, get them, then. And then we flay them, Al said, excitedly slashing his clawed paw at the air. Alex smiled at his underling's enthusiasm. Yes Al, then we slay them. I'm sorry, I just gotta say it again, boss. The plan to get the giant. Tom kissed his paws as if he'd just eaten a delicious meal. Beautiful. A real work of art. What about Jack? Sam asked, less interested in flattery. He is far less a concern than I originally thought. Yeah but if he finds out you faked the report about the giant coming back. He won't find out, at least not before it's too late. He won't even be accompanying them up the beanstalk. It'll just be us, and that miserable oversized oaf. Too bad they couldn't send a real warrior to take out the giant for us. Al remarked. It doesn't matter, Alex said, dismissing the minor hiccup in his plan with a simple wave. We'll get rid of the kids and handle it ourselves. Alex chuckled at the thought of finally enacting his revenge. The moment was spoiled, however by Tom making an annoying ek sound. Yes Tom, what is it? Well, okay, boss. See, now that you say that, I got a problem. Go ahead, Alex replied, bored already. Well it's just, you keep saying that we're going to, get the giant. That's right. Well, okay. And that sounds really great, Tom said, holding up his hands submissively. It's just, how are we gonna do that, seeing as how he's so big and we're so small. Al nodded his head stupidly at Tom as if that was something he'd been contemplating himself for a while. I'm glad you asked, Alex replied, grinning with his sharp teeth showing. Tomorrow, Alex moved around the trio of cats, animating all that he had planned. Chumpty, Betty, and Art will climb up the beanstalk and enter the giant's land. When they arrive, they'll see me and my three companions waiting for them. Tom will cut off their exit. Betty will cry, help oh dear help I am just a scared little girl or something. She will surrender her staff and fall to the floor crying. Al will tie her up. What about the big one? Tom asked. That ridiculous cow. He'll be strung up high in the air, his worst fear fully realized. He'll have to hang above the action, watching as his friends are humiliated below. Tom will guard him. And the egg? Sam wondered. Yes. The egg. He'll put up a fight. He's got more spunk than he realizes, but when the moment comes, he'll try to be the hero. Try, being the key word. Sam will stalk him, make him sweat, and then, when the time is right. Dinner is served, Al said, bearing his own set of sharp teeth. Exactly. Yeah, that's great boss, Tom said, his face scrunched up in confusion. But, uh, what about the giant? The giant will be sitting in his chair, minding his own business. None the wiser. Unsuspecting. Caught off guard. I'll slip into his house and tie his legs to his chair. When he rises to confront me, I'll flee, like the helpless bad kitty I am. He'll give chase and, well you know what they say, the bigger they are. Tom seemed satisfied. Sam was practically drooling. Al was still trying to work out the words that came after the bigger they are. Sam shook his head. All right. I'll admit it. You've got a good plan. Tom's right. It's a good plan, boss. Foolproof, Alex agreed. Before we do it, though, are you sure you want to go through with it? Sam asked. Is that a joke? I just mean, it's a lot of trouble all to get revenge over something that happened, I don't know, years ago. Some things are worth waiting for, revenge most of all, Alex said, before turning his head and mumbling to himself. They didn't hear what he said but the words Charlie Daniels rose above the murmur. Get some sleep. He ordered. Tomorrow's the big day. End of chapter.